Hello, hello, hello. <laughs> Welcome to No Boss Fights. My name is Jeff, and I will be your keeper of arcane lore for this evening. I am joined by a new group of investigators. First of all, we have longtime channel veterans, Ben. Hello there. And good evening. Brian. I hope you have a good night. <laughs> and Brian. Uh, hello, and I have mascot Alex with us. Nice. <laughs> also joined by Robin. Hello. Kieran, making his hello. second, making your second appearance on the channel. It is. And Patrick. What's the, what's the worst version of a debut? <laughs> <laughs> It's the um, disappointing second album, I think it is. <laughs> but oh, I'm, no. sure, I'm sure I'm sure this won't be it. And also Patrick. It's me in tears for fears. I'm <laughs> with you, I'm with you. <laughs> yeah. And Patrick, who is with us. I'm here evening. to contribute meaninglessly. So <laughs> I'm really excited tonight. All. I'm really excited tonight. I don't know about you guys, but um we are here to begin a new campaign and to help Richard out in the chat. This is Masks of Nialat Hotep, yeah. which is the, or well, some would some say it's the biggest RPG game, most epic RPG game, not just in Call of Cthulhu, but ever. And we're going to start it tonight. So no pressure. Right. Good night, everybody. I think we've done well enough as it is. <laughs> so, how is everybody feeling? Brian's getting his exercises in. for death. Brian's getting his exercises in. Uh, I'm going on record. I am not doing a celebratory dab. <laughs> I am doing a dab of hope. <laughs> That's we'll a dab. terrible. We'll see how that goes. What is a dab? I've never heard of these things. Don't seem to be born in this time. Foolish of mistake. Age. Starting with hope. <laughs> <laughs> so, without any further ado, are we ready to begin? Yeah. Absolutely. Uh, okay. You are standing in the dimly lit corridor of a hotel. Ahead of you is a hotel room door bearing the number 410. As you knock on the door, you hear a muffled cry and movement within. A sense of foreboding grips you as you look at your faces of your companions. Something terrible lies within. With but a moment of hesitation, you rush through the door into room 410 to find what lies within and your destiny. The scene fades to black. January the 13th, 1921. Search for ancient pyramid in Peru. Explorer plans expedition to discover site of lost civilization. Lima, January the 12th. Explorer Augustus Larkin is planning an expedition to the southern highlands of Peru, where he hopes to identify the site of a pyramid long forgotten by history. Following the discovery of a number of gold artifacts in the region, Larkin believes that he has found evidence that will lead him to their source. He is currently in Lima, planning the expedition, and is recruiting companions and possible backers. February the 20th, 1921. Thank you for joining the expedition, Stop. Please join me in Lima, Stop. I've booked you room at Hotel Mori, Stop. Meet 18th March at 7pm at Barcandano, Diron Angash, 202 Distrito de Lima, Stop. Augustus Larkin. March the 18th, 1921. You all meet in a tavern. That's how they all start, isn't it? <laughs> Or more, precise, <laughs> or more precisely, you all meet in a bar, the Bar Cordano in downtown Lima. Bottom right-hand corner of the map I've just put on screen. Man, is a bit fuzzy there. Hold on. Give it a moment to um, load up. Mm. I'm doing some squinting. Um, oh, you're yeah. singing Radiogram. So what did you say the name of the bar was again? Bar Cordano. Barcodano. Barcodano. No. But um, you all arrive at the bar. We'll have the opportunity to meet your characters very shortly. But to cut the long story short, you all arrive at Barcodano. It's it's a very um, 
simple but tastefully furnished bar. Soft lights. There's a Latin jazz band playing in the corner. And the waiters put you, and the waiters seat you at a table at which three other men are already sitting. One of them is of African American descent. The man in the middle is pale but um, with fair hair. The man on his right has somewhat wild hair with a bushy unkempt moustache. The waiters come, serve you drinks, serve you the local dish ceviche which is a seafood marinated in spices vinegar dish. And there's sort of, sort of like awkward silence when nobody really knows who's the first to speak. But after a few minutes, the um, African-American gentleman clears his throat and says, Well, Gussie, you're the one who brought us all here. Do you want to get this ball rolling? The man in the middle says, Thank you, Mr. Hughes. I am perfectly capable of speaking for myself. Well, welcome to Lima, gentlemen. It is very nice to have you here. My name is Augustus Larkin. Uh, the person to my left, Mr. Hughes, Mr. Jesse Hughes. He is a folklorist like yourself. He is recent addition to this expedition. And the man here to my right, um, with the, the man with the bushy hair and the unkempt moustache, this is my personal aide, Luis de Mendoza. Now, I've seen all of your qualifications. I know you are very suited to be here on this expedition, but I'd like to know something about the people I'll be working with. So if you could please tell, tell me a bit about yourselves. Start with Ben's character. Hi. Well, name's Denver. I uh, served the military for uh, quite some time. Don't really need to go into that kind of detail with you. Don't know you exactly taking a look at my past. But nonetheless, military background. I sort of got kicked out of the military for a while. And have uh, been drawing out a decent pension. Quite nice at my age. I've uh, I just decided that I need a little bit of adventure. So, decided to follow by a few of my favourite books and, uh, and all that lot. Decided to go out and find one myself, like those archaeologists you read about. <laughs> so long as we miss those bit of snakes. <laughs> um, moves to um, Brian's character next. You'd like to introduce yourself? Yes, I'm Tim Sullivan. I'm from Halifax. Uh, do a little bit of archaeology, was in Egypt a few times. Nice to meet you all. Pleasure. Moving to um, Robin's character. Um, <clears throat> so you see my character, he is a man with a lot of wild hair, big bushy beard. And he's currently got his hood up, which is of a uh, jaguar's head over his head and he's just tucking into the air the <laughs> dish but he's not using any kind of cutlery he's just using his hands <laughs> and he belches loudly and says flintlock <laughs> <laughs> I like that one I gotta say <laughs> Aaron? and then he lets out a massive belch <laughs> well uh Guten Abend, ich heiße äh, Dr. Äh, Reinhard Bauer und ich. Ah, Entschuldigung. Um, I am very. Uh, how, how do you say it? Um, travel tired. Yes. Um, I am Dr. Reinhard Bauer. I am from Berlin. Uh, I am here mostly as a favor to a friend. Uh, und ich. Uh, I'm sorry, uh, and I hope that I will be able to um, provide uh, medical assistance uh, on this uh, expedition uh, and also I have studied a little bit of uh, psychoanalysis so I can hopefully keep an eye on you all whilst you um, experience the wilderness as it were. Danke. 
Dagger. And Patrick. Good day. It's a pleasure to meet you all. My name is Gideon Faust. I'm a, a student of natural sciences. I study chemistry at Trinity College in London. And I am here primarily to document this expedition. Uh, I am uh, proud to say that I'm working to advance the science of photography. And I look forward to bringing records of our great deeds to the wider world. Um, Augustus Larkin nods and thanks you. Th thank you. I'm sure we'll all get on very well. Before I go any further, could um, people who wish to make me psychology checks? Because something seems quite tense at this table. Can you all make me psychology checks, please? Mm hmm. That in roll 20? That's in roll 20 on your character sheet in roll 20, yes. Yes, okay. This guy <laughs> I think it's done amazingly well there. I think I'm quite good at that. So that's a regular <laughs> success that we're looking for. Wow. Okay. We're starting off right, yes, a regular <laughs> success you want, yeah. <laughs> That they were done amazing there. <laughs> and everybody dies Someone instantly. Right. Meet me your oh, no. everybody dies. Wow. Okay, Someone yeah. Farted. It's the obvious reason why everything's so tense. It's just yeah, it just feels very <laughs> just feels like some sort of a tense atmosphere, but um Augustus Larkin is just like busy like trying to um keep matters going. So um he says, Well gentlemen, um I'll come straight to the point. If we succeed in our expedition not only will we have advanced historical studies to academic research by many years, we shall all become extremely wealthy. And he produces two items. He produces a small pendant um, made of, uh, made of, I think it's made of gold, and a golden cup. The pendant is in the form of a man holding two rods with different like rectangular shapes around it. The cup is a golden cup carved with circles, geometric patterns inlaid with turquoise and he puts them on the table. He says, I got these from an alpaca farmer, alpaca farmer, alpaca farmer out near Puno. He said his grandfather found them in tunnels um, on one of his travels. The grandfather never returned to the site, some sort of superstitious fear, but he passed them down to his um, family. He told his family there were other treasures in the tunnels. But the farmer couldn't tell me where this was, so I'm hoping, with your help, to locate this um, ruin and see what other treasures are in there. Now that sounds cracking. <laughs> and he like, please examine these as you wish. I immediately go and pick one up and take a look. Okay. okay um... Whichever one happens to be closer. Um, we'll say, just for argument's sake, we'll say it's the pendant. Alright. You look at it, um, it's very, it seems quite finely crafted to your eyes. Um, do you have any archaeological experience or appraise, or anything in appraise at all? I have a little bit in archaeology, I have 20 in archaeology. Okay, uh, make me an archaeology roll. Hey, let us see. This is a pendant. <laughs> Anybody else like to try? <laughs> I'm sure you're um, passing it around to each yes. other to see, and the cup around to if each other. If I may, can I scrape my nail against that I try to see, use my knowledge of chemistry and natural sciences to know if it's really gold? Um, yes, you may do that. Make me a chemistry roll. The only Tim Sullivan is a very good archaeologist. <laughs> Don't worry, it's why we're here. We're gonna learn. You can spend luck if, if you wish to spend luck. You, I will. I am allowing spend luck luck spends in this. So if you wish um, to, I use... have twenty five luck. I'm going to <laughs> rush it. Thank you. Wow, that's cool. Wow. You see, also um, Jesse Hughes is also taking an interest in these artifacts. He hasn't seen them before either. And you like you pass them around to each other, like looking at them. Golden cup seems very pretty. The pendant seems like you know, seems very old, very intricate. Pass them around to each other. Pass them to Jesse Hughes. Um, Larkin's... I'd like to look. At... Sorry, carry on. I'd like to look across the table to our... okay, so Larkin and all that lot, and just see. Uh... 
But you obviously think, seem to believe there's a lot more to these. And I even know what on earth I'm touching. So what on earth are you taking from them? What do you see that I don't? Well, see, the farmer who sold them to me, he told, them, he told me that his grandfather talks about this lost pyramid. And I've seen enough evidence in that region myself. I haven't found the pyramid yet, but I've seen enough evidence that this pyramid exists. And as far as I can tell, no other expedition has found this pyramid. If we find it, we'll be the first. And just imagine the fame we'll have. Just imagine the, the historical treasures that lie within. Do you even know where we need to start looking? I have organized trucks and transport and supplies. My plan is to journey out to Puno, near Lake Titicaca, and from there we should be able to pick up the trail to the pyramid. I believe it's a few days' journey from Puno up in the highlands. Well, I'll tell you that when we get there. It's at least something I have some expertise in. Mm, likewise. I'm certain the scenery will be breathtaking. Oh, it certainly is that, um, Mr. Faust, it certainly is that. <laughs> <laughs> do, you, do you want to sound, uh, less? Do you want to sound, do you want to sound, uh, less distressing, or is, is this a part of the pitch, as it were? Well, I'm sure that once we find this pyramid, it will make our names. Our names will go down. Our names will go down forever. Pyramid. Well, I won't have trouble if people are writing stories about me. <laughs> if you're on board, um, the trucks will be arriving on Monday in March. Monday, March the twenty-first. That's about eight a.m. Um, I've booked you all rooms at the Hotel Mori. Um, I hope you don't. I hope that's okay. Myself and Mr. De Mendoza here. We're staying at the Hotel Espana, but they didn't have any extra room to accommodate um, a larger party, so I've booked you all rooms at the Hotel Mori. The trucks will be leaving from the Hotel Espana. And on your map, that's locations 3 is Hotel Espana, 4 is Hotel Mori. Right. Well, I think... Jesse Hughes is also listening to this, because it's the first time he's heard the pitch as well. And he asks... Well, Gussie, you expect us to take your word for this? Can you see your research? Do you have your papers with you? And Larkin says, oh, I'm Mr. Hughes, um, I'm sure you understand that I didn't want the papers to fall into the wrong hands, so I destroyed them. But don't worry, though. It's all up here. Ooh, I, whoa, whoa, whoa. Hey, hey, hey. You destroyed them? I didn't want them. To, I didn't want anybody else to find out. I didn't want anybody Why? else to get there first. So we have to trust everything that comes out your mouth as gospel Mr. law. Mr. Smith, unless you notice, I am the um, organizer and financier of this expedition. I know what I'm doing. Mr. Larkin would not try to deceive us, would he? Have some yeah, it's so much about the deceiving <laughs> side of things. It's about whether or not whether he knows what on earth he's talking about. I don't want to walk myself into somewhere completely deadly just for the sake of you. Had no idea. Oh, Mister, Mister Smith, I thought you were eager for adventure. I'm eager for adventure, but it doesn't mean I'm going to be dumb about it. <laughs> I've seen enough war zones. Sorry. Yep. Sorry. Can I do a psychology roll? <laughs> don't trust this guy. Make me a psychology roll. Yes. Yes. I'm I'm not amazing at psychology, but I am not terrible at it. So let's see how this goes. That is indeed a success. success. A fair success. I'm so proud of you. Don't forget to <laughs> don't forget First to one of the night. Don't forget to put the tick, the, put, put the tick in the, put the tick against the skill because we do get there are points where you do yes, improvements. I have done so. Thank you. Um, while the Larkin story about the farmer is a little bit iffy he does seem to honestly believe that there is a pyramid that the items came uh -huh. from it and that there uh -huh. is more there so what i'm getting is he is a believer and he possibly thinks that we are 
Mm -hmm. And he sort of wants to use us to bolster his, to, to sort of do the dirty work and bolster his reputation. That's kind of what I'm getting. Mm -hmm. Possibly, possibly. At the very least, he, you've, at the very least, you put the call out for um, expedition members, and you've responded, and he's, you know, and now he is giving you the pitch. To um, you would have read the article in, in the paper about the lost pyramid, and mm -hmm. that's why you're here. <laughs> well, it was my friend that put me up to this. I'm not really sure about it all. I'm just here because I was told that the hot weather would do good things for my arthritis. So, um, we'll see. <laughs> Um, I was going to say um, I would finish my bowl, push it to one side stick my feet up on the table oh. and then um, kind of look over and what's he here for? And I point at Mendoza Oh, Mr. de Mendoza here is my uh, personal assistant. He does a lot of the um, heavy work you might say um, he carries my message he um, couriers my messages he makes my phone calls He's my right-hand man. I'm going to um, interject at this point. Mendoza has not said a word this entire conversation. Get it. Words. Words. Hmm. So what's your take on this stoic the silent over there? He looks at you and you get the feeling that he is... He's like he's got this piercing glare, like he's measuring you up, but he still really doesn't say anything. He just like grunts. The man asked you a question. I'm here for what? Mr. La I'm here to do Sorry. what Mr. Larkin says. Hmm. Well. It seems more like a. Well, you don't know what sister puts you to have a bodyguard of some kind, wouldn't you? I'm right in thinking that, am I not? Larkin is an addict. Oh, Mr. Mendoza does have. Um, does act as my bodyguard on occasion, yes. Right. Good to know we got the trust down then. But then again, I suppose that's one that's going to be earned. Uh, before we carry on any further, I don't suppose you happen to have a map. I'd at least like to have an idea of roughly the area we're looking at. I'm again, my I burnt my papers. However, I do know I do believe the pyramid to be um, a few days' journey from Puno. Are you familiar with Puno, Mister Smith? Well, from what I took a look before I came by, yeah. At that's, least know the landscape and general idea of the territory around. That's our first port of call. It's nine days. It's three days from Lima, and um, that's our first port of call. Once we get there, we can pick up the trail. I believe it's. I believe the pyramid shouldn't be too hard from there, but from Puno, we can get solid clues as to where it is. This pyramid Excuse has been me? hidden for many years. Yes, um, Doctor Bauer. Um, uh, I am not. Uh familiar with uh, Puno? Puno? Can uh, you please let me know what um, I should know about this um, town? Puno. Or... Puno is a village on the um, on the shores of Lake Titicaca. It's a very simple life, a mostly rural um, lifestyle. Hmm. Just the way Salt of the earth. In fact, I believe that um, Mr. Locke, you are from that area originally, are you not? Mm. Nearby. Not exactly there. Of course, of I course. Like, I like to keep to myself. The cities are too noisy. Too many people. The evening progresses, and... Um... After dinner, um, Larkin stands up and says, um, You must forgive me, gentlemen. Uh, my constitution is not too good. Um, the, as I say, the trucks will, le will arrive to pick us up on Monday. Um, your time is your own before until then. Um, I hope to see you there, 8 o'clock 
Monday morning at the Hotel Espana. Um, Mendoza, please, could you help me get back to the hotel? Would you like me to take a look at you, sir? Uh, Dr. Bauer, roll me a medicine roll. I will do that. I will do that. I hope. <laughs> um, that is a hard success. Very well. How much would I have to spend to make that an extreme success? You don't need to make that an extreme success. Okay. I should hope that's a success with the amount of points you dumped into it. <laughs> <laughs> One would hope. One would hope. This is literally his entire career. <laughs> um, you've noticed, and it's more prominent now, but you notice that oh. um, over the course of the evening, Larkin's gone noticeably paler and sweatier, even though it's not really that warm. Lima is a warm yeah. place, but in the yeah. evening, it's not that warm. But Larkin has yeah. become noticeably paler and sweatier. And you notice as he stands up, he puts his hand on the table to stand up, you notice his hands are trembling. You do your medical knowledge, you do recognise what this is. This is indicative of opiate withdrawal. Um, okay. Very interesting. Very interesting. I think I probably wouldn't bring that up in that case. Okay. Um, yeah, I think possibly as as they go, um, hmm. I was going pat, pat, um, pat Larkin's hand and I would say, you know, uh, if you have any need of um, something to take the edge off, um, <laughs> you know where to find me. Yeah? Uh, thank you, Dr. Bauer. That's um, one of the reasons I hired you for this trip. Um, Mendoza, please. And Mendoza leads him out of the bar. Jesse says, um, I'm going to stay behind and get to know our friends a little bit better. Mm -hmm. After Larkin and Mendoza <clears throat> leave the bar, Jesse says, Well, my friends, um, would you care to join me for a drink? Certainly. Hey. Yeah. Idea. Okay. And he brings out another round of drinks, more ceviche, and he pulls out a pipe, puts it in his mouth and lights it, and the smoke rises through, and he can smell the tobacco that he uses. And he sits no, back and he says, Excuse me one moment here. Oh. And I'm going to wait for Brian to come back, actually, for that. Um, really? Oh, spicy. So, ceviche is served. Anybody, any of you ever heard of ceviche before? No, but I'm tucking in nonetheless. <laughs> Can't say that I do, but I'll be doing the exact same thing. Have you heard of them? It's, it's, um, it's, like raw, it's like seafood, like raw seafood that's been like mm. spiced and marinated. Um, it's a very popular yeah. dish. Isn't it basically yeah. like South American sushi? Pretty much, pretty much, yeah. <laughs> Yeah. That sounds good. Be more elegance to the way Flint's eating. He's just like hands in, just. I think everybody's probably hands in. I don't think they. I don't know. To if be you... fair, though, <laughs> seeing the moment you broke the ice of that, I've got no qualm in not <laughs> just stuffing in. Let me be clear, Doctor Bauer is absolutely not hands in. <laughs> <laughs> I have a travel fork if you'd like it. <laughs> <laughs> It's a handy one. On the other side, there's a spoon with a knife on it. <laughs> no, that sounds... That sounds very useful. That sounds very useful. <laughs> well, it's helped me in a few times. <laughs> and, um... Larkin uh -huh. leans back... Larkin leans Hello? back in... Larkin's there. Hi, Brian. Um, Jesse Hughes leans back in his chair with his pipe, looking thoughtfully at you, and he says... So... What do you make of our Mr. Larkin and his story? Uh, I'd really like to know where he's what going. Story wise, I've heard crazier. But him something seems a wee bit off. Strikes me yeah, as I... a man of intellect and ambition. Yeah. Maybe the intellect side of things. Never got too well with the smarty ones. May I be Frank? Please. All right, if you want to be Frank, <laughs> nice to meet you, Frank. I'll be Joe. <laughs> you know, I I should have seen that coming. Your your uh, <laughs> British sense of humour. Um, <laughs> I wonder exactly why um, 
our good Mr. Larkin uh, is spending time uh, worrying about this when he could be worrying about uh, his own health. However, uh, I am here on a personal recommendation from a good friend of mine, and I trust his judgment. So I am sure uh, things will go um, swimmingly. And you, Mr. Oh, no. Sullivan. And you, Mr. Oh, Sullivan. And you, Mr. Sullivan. What do you make of Mr. Larkin? He seems seems a bit. Sinister, to say the least. I'm. Can I trust you, gentlemen? Implicitly. I'm not very yeah. listening. I, I'm going to lay my cards down on the table. My name is not Jesse Hughes. That was an alias I gave to Larkin. My real name is Jackson Elias. And the folklorist part was almost true. I'm an author. I um, write books on ancient sects of all around the world. And I was, I'm here in Peru researching a new book. I have traveled around the area. I traveled to Lake Titicaca. But what I heard, but I heard some things there. I think Larkin may be leading us into danger. When you say danger, I assume you mean more than just getting lost in the woods. What I heard, I, I visited Puno. Um, I heard rumours of a death cult going back centuries called the Karasiri. And what I heard, it seems that Larkin and Mendoza may be part of this cult. Just some things that don't add up. For example, for example, for example, I asked some of the locals about this pyramid, where this, about this pyramid that they found, and they know about the pyramid. Larkin tried to get some of the locals there to help him excavate the pyramid, and they just refused outright to go near the pyramid. Some sort of superstition around it. Um, some sort of ancient devils there. I don't believe it. It's ancient superstition, but still it says loads. Yeah, the sister makes her unusual um, for local peoples to believe in now. Uh, you know, there's things that are. There's something else. There's just be things you can't understand. There's, there's something else. That... Having been a. Mm. Sorry, Jeff. Carry on, you, you, uh, carry, you carry on. Been, um, having been reasonably local to Puno, would I have missed, may, maybe heard of these pyramids at all? Apart from today, you would have heard, you would have heard the rumours probably, not enough to know where mm -hmm. it is, but you'd have definitely heard the rumours of this evil place where mm -hmm. something ancient, something ancient is. The locals will not go near the place at all for any reason. Glarkin tried. Um, yeah. Jackson carries on saying, "There's something else that doesn't add up. We're all here to find this pyramid, to research it, to uncover its history." Why then is the best authority on Mayan history not here? <laughs> Professor Nemesio Sanchez of the National University of San Marco he is in Lima. He lives and works in this town. He is the authority, local authority, on Mayan architecture, on ancient ruins around here. He has written books about it, but why isn't he here? Perhaps young Master Larkin doesn't want his discovery to be poached by a more accredited academia. Yeah, it's possible, it's possible. Oh, yeah, um... I understand. It's a wee bit of a... Uh... It's always a wee bit of a fight between these... Ac... Not these academics. I Who got a... there first? Who said I've seen <laughs> this? I, it might be worth having a now. I, I've, I have an appointment to meet uh, Professor Sanchez at the museum. I'm going to butcher this. Uh, I'm going to butcher this pronunciation at the Museo de Arqueologia e Antropolog 
Apologia um, tomorrow at, t at tomorrow afternoon at two, and um, I'd be very, very happy for you to join me if you would. Be delighted. Yeah. Huh. More than delighted. Yeah. I like that a lot. Mine, uh, mine, friend, um, Doctor Eckhart. <laughs> Let me look up his surname. Doctor Eckhart Mentz. Um, he should be in the area. Um, I'm sure that he has uh, signed off on uh, this, uh, Doctor Larkin. Uh, I'm, I'm sure there is n uh, nothing but. Uh, Academic rivalries, and uh, it is it is n nothing to worry about. I've seen this exact thing happen many times. Well, it's... I'd like to learn a little bit more about this death cult as well. It's very likely that, that you're right. It. It's very likely that you're right, Doctor Bauer. But um, it does no harm to go into these things with full knowledge, does it? A cult is one thing. A death cult is quite another. <laughs> Yeah, the weather is exaggerated as well. Once again, different cultures see different things. Believe that they have to be. Hey. Perhaps it's only a meaning cult. <laughs> it, it could be just down to just a way they're perceived. Or it could be bad publicity. It's hard to tell these days. Yeah. In which case, gentlemen, um... Well, we're all staying at the Hotel Mori. Why did he not stay at the Hotel Mori? Why is he at the Hotel Espanol? We're at the Hotel Mori. I figured that this one was the cheaper one. Yeah. Mm. Um, Let's face it, you want us to go on an expedition where they're most likely going to be sleeping outdoors. <laughs> you know, going to waste us on a good, uh, a good hotel before we go. Well, gentlemen, in that case... Um, oh, yeah. I was just going to say, I think you see Dr. Bauer sort of um, twist his wrists. Just like, ah, oh, no. It's going to get worse. <laughs> well, gentlemen, in that case, um, shall we meet at the museum tomorrow? 2pm? Um, yeah. Hey, sounds good to me. Hey. In the meantime, time for another drowning. <laughs> <laughs> and with that... We bring this scene to a close. Now, the way this is going to work going forward is each day has three periods, morning, afternoon, and evening. And you can say what you wish to do on each of those periods. Any appointments you have on those days. So, for example, your appointments are tomorrow afternoon, 2 p.m., Professor Sanchez. Monday, 8 a.m., the trucks at the Hotel Espanas. Or anyth anything you want to do during those time periods. I'll keep I'll keep a note of you on the calendar. I was going to say, what day is it currently today? It is Friday, March the eighteenth. So, and how long until we leave? You leave on Monday, so you've got Saturday and Sunday. Oh, do we all have fine. to do the same thing? Yeah. You can split what you wish. You can split off what you wish to do. You can, if you wish to, like choose to fast forward through a time period, and we can say you're just like doing general sort of like you know buying supplies, getting food, whatever, just like to fast forward through it if you want to. Um, but this is an op fairly open game, so you can do what you wish. So the next day, Saturday, the nineteenth of March, dawns. In the afternoon, you are visiting. The afternoon, you have an appointment to visit Professor Sanchez with um, Jackson Elias. Anything you want to do in the morning, or are you just going to sleep in? I was going to say, uh, Clint would be going out and buying supplies for the party. Like, I see him uh, here. Kind of whatever. Okay, rations and bits and pieces. Yeah, whatever. Kind it of sounds like things will be going on a trek at one point. Kind of like clothes that would be appropriate to the weather and all that. Okay. Mm, well, yeah, you I got think... something against me jacket. No, it would be all right. doing the same. <laughs> Dr. Bauer doesn't know much about what's appropriate for taking with you into a jungle of South America, but <laughs> um, he does know about people, and I think he would want to uh, sort of, if those two are going off to go and buy supplies, I think Dr. Bauer would follow them, 
and just sort of try to get a, uh, you know, sort of like, what's their baseline health? What's their baseline mental health? Um, and just sort of try to understand what these people are like when they are without a particularly stressful situation. If you had to rate your sanity on, say, an arbitrary scale of, say, out of 99, <laughs> and um, so, is that the same for um, Gideon and Tim as well? It's like getting I think ready, preparing. Gideon would initially consider going with them, but he thinks that looking at tents for six hours is super boring. So he is going to go and make sure that his camera still functions after making the trip overseas by taking some beautiful scenic shots of the harbour. Oh, nice. Just to make sure it's a, it's a lovely morning, make sure, you know, we're documenting that we've arrived here and that, you know, the, it captures colour very well and also making a note, just completely coincidentally, of what ships are at harbour at this time, just so that's a thing that I have photos of. Like it. So this is more like general, just like settling in, getting supplies, Making this sure you're is, prepared for yeah. as much. This is Gideon making sure his, his camera works, and for me, he doesn't think this is going to be of any material help, but I would just like to be able to say later on that I knew what ships were docked at this time. Okay. Okay, that's fair. Um, so, the morning passes, you will go on your errands, various places, bring in some supplies, rations, foods, tents. Warm clothing because yeah, it does get pretty chilly up in the mountains. Down here in Lima, it's quite balmy actually. You're looking at temperatures between like 20s and 20s to 30s. But I think, didn't lock. You would know that up in the highlands, it gets quite a bit colder, especially at night time. And uh, you can see him kind of looking for warm furs and the like. But he he looks very kind of just generally nervous as well. Okay. 2 p.m. approaches. I take it you're all going to meet with um, Jackson and Elias at the museum? Mm-hmm. So Aye. Gave our word. I want to see this place as well, to be fair. I like museums. They're interesting. Very well. Um, so, you arrive at the entrance to the museum. I'm not going to try and pronounce it again. It is... I will absolutely murder it. I'll try to get the Museo di Archaeologia e Antropol Antropologia. Museum of Archaeology and Anthropology. And Jackson Elias is indeed waiting for you at the entrance to the museum. With his hat, with his pipe in his hand. Well, my friends, it's good to see you. I'm, I'm glad you're here. Um, shall we? Aye, lead the way. Sadly. Jackson Elias leads the way. Um, he speaks to the receptionist in Spanish, and the and he and he gets directed to the appropriate office. It's a typical so like um, office, an academic office. There's a desk. There's like books, rows of books. There's a few antiquities um, dotted around. You are met by Professor Nemesio Sanchez. Picture. And also Ooh. by a young lady who Professor Sanchez introduces as his um, assistant, student assistant, Trinidad Rizzo. And Trinidad is extremely excited to meet you all. She starts gabbling in Spanish. Those of you who know Spanish, it's too quick to um, too quick to follow. But Professor Sanchez, um, for convenience sake, I'll do Professor Sanchez in English because people will be translating for you. You've got enough people here to translate for you. Um, Professor Sanchez yeah. says to Trinidad, um, please, please, Trinidad, um, please, um, could you go down to the storeroom and bring up the artifacts and your notes and that book? Um, I think we'll find them very useful. And Trinidad nods and um, leaves quickly. And Nemesio says, ah, oh, Mr. Elias, I presume, um, it is the first time we have met. I've, I've, um, enjoyed. I've seen your correspondence and. Um, I see you brought friends with you. I was not expecting other visitors, but um, I'm sure these are trustworthy people. And Elias says, 
These are my new friends. They've also joined the expedition. They're interested in what you have to say. Sanchez has enough seats for everybody to sit down. He offers around sherry, brandy, local spirits, probably some smokes like cigarettes. Once everybody is sat down, um, oh, Flint standing, <laughs> and or standing as you I'll wish. I'll take it, Randy. That's fine. Who doesn't love a, a good, clean, health agnostic cigarette here in the 1920s? <laughs> It's good for you. It, Dr. It, it, Bauer, Dr. Bauer will take a seat and a sherry and will uh, politely decline the cigarette. But, but smoking's good for you. It's, um, it's, it's your lungs give you a smoother... F that's, what, that's what the adverts tell me. Um, <laughs> it clears the tubes and keeps your <laughs> lungs... Yeah, here's oh, yeah. Dr. If you tell me how many brand I ain't having it. Gases in the lungs after, after seeing all of the mustard gas in World War One. <laughs> So, after everybody is settled in, Sanchez says to you, um, Yes, you've joined the Arkin. Did Elias tell you that um, I've written to Larkin asking to join the expedition, but he's not even answered. He has ignored my letters. When I tried contacting him directly, rude. when I tried contacting him directly, he just brushed me off. Is that what you say? Is that the phrase? That is the phrase, yes. Yes, I, but I suspect he, he's a, he is simply another looter. There's keep I keep writing to the government asking him to put regulations in place to prevent looting of historical sites, but no, there's, they don't do anything. It, it's not important enough to them, and so frustrating. Paqueros, a lot of them. Paqueros, a lot of them. Well, no matter what the, their behavior may be, I will make absolutely certain that the uh, the ruins are recorded in their natural, untouched state. Of course. Um, in fact, I'm, my current course of action I'm considering is to learn the location of the period my, myself and try and get there first before Larkin. But time is running out. In fact, Riso has gone down to the storerooms. She found this book dating from the time of the conquistadors we believe it may be relevant and we also found a strange artifact that we believe is from the area that's what she's that's what she's gone down for she should be back soon actually it's a um really? it's the um it's the account of a 16th century conquistador by the name of gaspar figueroa mm. and looking at Rito's notes Rito has been Looking, reading through it and writing notes on it. It mm. talks about a pyramid out near Lake Titicaca, and this could be the same pyramid. Interesting. Well, if the Contisadors found it, surely it's been already looted. You'd think. You would think. Um, it would be. It shouldn't take this long to um, for this to come back from the storeroom, and bless you. You may perhaps we should else. go and uh, perhaps we should go and head and check on her. If they know that you're already here, there's a chance that maybe they've decided to try and do something with your artifact and such. Kind of a, a tactic I've seen happen you, before. If you wish to, you're welcome to do so. Um, the storeroom, you can't miss it. Um, the storeroom is um, it's clearly signposted down the stairs. It's, in fact, it's almost directly under this office. Um, can I just ask, how many of you are going to the storeroom? I've got two think, people. I think my... Dr. Bauer is just going to sort of turn to, I'm sorry, Denver Smith and say, uh, surely it's a young woman uh, should not be uh, um, penalised for taking her time with her work. I don't see any reason to go down and, and, and check on her any time uh, in the near future. Doctor, yeah. Doctor, he's already said that she's taking longer than she would normally take, to a point where he's worried about it. Now, if he's worried about it, that goes to say that there's something going on. And I don't know whether it is something going on or not going on, but I don't think it hurts to check. You are so that's what I'm going to go do. I'm going to go check. Well, and I'm going to go check with my little Matilda to my side, <laughs> just in case. Just make sure you don't shoot her in your paranoia, okay? 
Hey, gonna shoot her in paranoia or any other noia that there is. Yeah. I'm just gonna go down and make sure that she's all right. Yeah, because we're talking about artifacts, and people like to steal artifacts, if you hadn't noticed. All right, all right. I'm gonna go down. Anybody going with him? Yep, I'll I'm go down. Not. I am enjoying my cigar. I will go with him. So that is... I think it's not about it. It's just like, what are these losers talking about? <laughs> this so, is archaeology. Archaeology is not exciting. So, Denver Smith, Flint Locke, and Tim Sullivan, you follow the directions given down to the storeroom. You enter the storeroom. It is... Um, the door is left slightly ajar, actually. As though someone has been here not long ago, which matches um, Trinidad. Um, sorry about that. Um, the storeroom is... <laughs> you, enter, you enter it, and um, dim lighting. The storeroom itself is cavernous. About, if you were to guess, probably about 80 feet long by 45 feet wide. Floor to ceiling shelves f um, fill the place. Um, most of them packed with crates, boxes, bags containing various artifacts. Um, the electric lighting is quite dim and some of it flickers on and off. Um, there's shadows. It's a typical storeroom. There's not very, not easy to see very far in it. Um, but as you progress through the storeroom, you do see something lying on the floor. You see a pair of legs. We'll see. You see a pair of legs. I run up and uh, keeping an eye around to make sure there's no one else running away or getting ready to swing an attack. I want to get close as I can. So okay. this is someone who's gone down. We need to get a doctor onto this quick. Yeah. You find a pair of legs. The pair of legs is attached to a body. It's attached to arms. It's attached to a head. But you see that the top part of a shirt has been torn open and there's this circle of torn bloody flesh on her upper chest also see that her face you saw her face before she was like quite you know, quite um, normal quite full it's like the skin has been her face has been drained and the skin is pulled tight against her, her skull her face is frozen in a mask of terror eyes still wide and staring I require a sanity roll from Denzel Smith, Flintlock, and Tim Sullivan, please. We're hitting the ground running tonight. El Chupacabra. <laughs> I will be immediately yelling back the moment seeing this. Uh, get the doctor. <laughs> so, getting the gun up, ready to take a look around the rest of this. Is that even? Oh, no, for that's like psych that's psychol that's psychology. That's psychology. <laughs> It is a dead. The body is dead. <laughs> Sanity roll, please. Oh no! You found it. Is it doing? It's right at the top of the page. If it helps. Okay. Oh, there we go. Okay. So for a pass, the it's very no definition of a pass success. <laughs> For a pass, it's no loss. For a failure, uh, Mr. Locke, 1d6. Because this is not natural. This is not natural in the slightest. Four, that's Hold fine. yourself together. Tim, you don't, Tim, you're not losing any. It's just for Flint Locke was the 1d6. Oh, not no. for you. Not for you. Oh. Ah. <laughs> All right, if you want to lose your sanity, go ahead. You, you don't want to lose six sanity at this stage of the game. So, um, Flintlock, you lose four sanity. <laughs> you kind of like step back and um, in shock. Near her body, near her outstretched arm, you find a book, some pages, loose pages, like from a notebook, and a small wooden crate that's been smashed open. Told you, be going for the artifact. I'll take that book. 
who knows what's in there, but she's been running down notes. I suppose there'd be something of use in there. I want to look around and make sure that there's no sign of... I want to see if there's anyone else in here, if I can tell where they left. Um, make me a spot hidden. Actually, make me a track roll. This here. If you got a track, make me a track roll. Track. Spot hidden would have been better, but we'll go with track. <laughs> Yeah, I think of that. Okay, make me a spot hidden. Watch that! Spot... <laughs> make... <laughs> or make me a spot hidden. If you make me a spot... Say, yeah. We'll try to spot hidden and we'll see what happens there. Oh, that's what you Stream want. success! <laughs> that, that, would, that, would have also done for you, that would have also done for your track as well. So, spot hidden, yep. Oh, yeah. Um, <laughs> you see... <clears throat> spurts of blood. As though someone has stepped in her blood. And left footprints. I'm going to follow them, gun drawn. They lead to another door out of the storeroom and up the stairs. What are you, the other two doing? Um, Flint Knock and Tim Sullivan. Uh, first off, I would have probably had a look in the chest. The crate or whatever. Uh, Tim is just in general looking around for okay. clues. So... Flint, you look in the chest. You see, um, the chest contained lots of straw and a large piece of gold. Mm -hmm. I can show you what this looks like, actually. A large piece of intricately worked, long, worked gold, about two foot long. Um, quite weighty. Mm -hmm. Can you make me a spot hidden as well, please, as you look at this? Mm -hmm. <laughs> Hang on. There we go. Sorry, I was just adding to me notes. Sure thing. Nice. You're looking. You're looking at this thing. It's mm. quite. It's quite heavy, but you're able to lift it no problem. You're looking at it, and it looks like. Skin has been burned onto it, as though someone touched it. It's like a very, very, but found it very, very hot. Like they're touching a hot kettle or a hot iron. Mm. But the gold itself is cold. Um. Yeah. So does it look human skin? It looks like fingerprints. Okay. Um, All right. Tim Sullivan, you find a lot of shelves near the body knocked over, as though there's a struggle. Mm. Like crates on the floor, books, artifacts spread all over the floor. Mm -hmm. Did anybody pick up the book in the notes, by the way? I called to you to do that while I went off. Okay. So I hope one of you did that. <laughs> <laughs> I was going to say, I would have also picked them up if I'd been told. That's fine. That's absolutely fine. We're going to um, leave you for the moment and move back to the office. <laughs> where Professor Sanchez, Jackson Elias, Dr. Bauer and Mr. Faust are. And you're again making small talk. As the others have gone off to see where Rizo is. Okay. But making polite conversation about the social life here in the city and what it's like to live here. And you hear a scream from outside. A really scream as if someone is in pain. Oh. It sounds like someone's in pain. I think Dr. Bauer uh I think first of all he would probably turn turn to the professor and say, uh, that is not, uh, normal, is it? No, no, no. No, definitely not. No, 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 of course not, no. Um, <laughs> and running. Okay. Yeah. Uh, and he'll, he'll start jogging. He's not, yeah. he's not, he's not a running man. He'll start jogging towards the sun. Jackson will say to the say, say to Sanchez, "You wait here. We'll be right back. We'll be back as quickly as possible." And he also runs out. 
you see several things. It's like Mr. Elias, why don't you stay here with our with our friends? Yeah. Well, as soon as you step outside the door, that kind of dies on your lips because you see a scene of panic. You see oh. someone lying a bit further up the corridor. Someone lying back against the wall, holding his shoulder, and it looks like there's blood seeping through his okay. fingers. But you also see from a nearby door, you see smoke coming out of it, and people are panicking and running from it. There's about half a dozen people, like, you know, screaming and running. A smoke's coming out from this door. Fire! A smoke is fire. in fire smoke or gun smoke? Smoke, smoke is in fire smoke. Oh! We're gonna start shouting fire. Jackson is I'm also. Go to the man. Okay, you go to the man, and he's breathing heavily. And he just like starts gabbling in Spanish, um, which you don't understand. But Jackson's nearby, and he says, "Nine, nine, uh, Inglesi, Inglesi." Yeah, uh, he's broken English. Um, I I speak English a oh. bit. Yeah. Um, stabbed. He stabbed me. He had a sword stabbed. and he stabbed me. Sword. <laughs> I think Dr. Bauer is like, shit, my English isn't as good as I thought it was. <laughs> uh, but I'll, I'll have a look at his wounds and see if he they are his, consistent with sword wounds. He pulls his hand away, and, and it, is, it is a stab wound gone clean through his shoulder. God, Nemo, um, hold still, hold still. And I think Dr. Bauer has a, has a, a sizable sort of leather, sort of doctor's case. Hmm. Which he he carries for cases such as this. Um, okay. May I do a first aid roll on the young man? You may do a first aid roll. That is a hard success. You're able to um, bandage up the wound, give him something for the pain. He's his breathing starts to slow down, become normal. Now don't take too much of this uh, opiate because uh, it has bad side effects. Uh, but for a little bit, uh, yeah. Gracias, gracias, señor. Uh, the nada. Yeah. See. I'm going to throw open the door to that burning <laughs> room and see if I, see if there's anyone immediately in danger in there. The room itself is empty. It looks like whoever was in there left. Um, whoever people didn't actually weren't actually in there, but um, it looks like it's coming from a, a rubbish bin, a fire in the rubbish bin. And Jackson is there with you as well, and he just like calls out, "Bring water." What uh, what kind of stuff is in this room? Is there a lot of loose paper or...? Loose paper, it's like another office, like an administration office. Okay. Uh, in that case... Oh, I'm gonna... I don't know, can I try and, and, and pick up the, the, the burning the burning bin and try and carry it out of this room to somewhere safer? Okay. As you do so, um, somebody comes up with water, somebody else comes up probably with a blanket trying to like put the fire out before... Before the smoke build, before the smoke builds uh, up. Perfect. Yes. Yep. Um. Then you hear a scream coming from Professor Sanchez's office. That's in here, Mel. I'm still. Am I still carrying this burning bin? Look, what's this? You want to be carrying the burning bin? <clears throat> Not really. No. Well, as soon as the fire's See, out, you... of the anti-firefighter. I'll, 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 pa I'll pass it to whoever was also holding the water. I'll put, I'll put, I'll put, I'll put this fire here. Room. I'll put this fire over here with the rest of the fire. Yes, exactly. Just put it down in the middle of the hallway. Yeah. <laughs> Don't kick that over. And then go the, fi the, the fire is dealt with very easily. That's not that's not the problem. But um, yeah, um, you hear a scream coming from Professor Sanchez's office. Distraction. Is the gentleman um, I just patched up uh, okay? He seems to be. He seems to be. The wound was thrown through, but it seems to miss anything vital. Who who's, um, stabbed you? He had, he had wild hair and this unkempt moustache. Moustache? I don't know who he was. Wild hair and Ah, ah, this is not right. Not them, Um, and I think Doctor Bauer is just gonna stand up and 
uh, help 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 this young man to his feet. Uh, mm. and, and I think the young man is is probably about a foot taller than he is. Uh, <laughs> uh, and he says, "Yeah, uh, uh, best, um good. Yeah. Ah, uh, see, si, see, si, senor, see, si. uh. see, si, see. Si. Yeah. And I will <laughs> head towards the next set of screams. So, yes, yes, no lines. I'm gonna say ah, that Tim Anderson. <laughs> probably Gideon as well, and definitely Jackson will rush back to Professor <laughs> Sanchez's office. And you see him on the floor, and he's like writhing around, clutching at his stomach. And he 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 kissed me. He get, oh, get it out, get it out. Oh, oh, oh. And he's just like clutching at his stomach. <laughs> He and he, kissed you, look, you, look, you? You look at his mouth and there's some like white secretion around his mouth. Oh, Please. Okay, he put out he put out drinks, yes? <clears throat> yes. Yes. Okay. I'm gonna find the highest uh like alcohol content thing there and try to Oh no no no. Is there is there salt basically? Is there salt? Say yes. Yep. Okay, I'm gonna just pour tequila shots. The... Tequila shots. I'm, I'm, I'm going to pour all the salt into water, and then make him drink it. Try and make him throw up. Uh, okay. While you're doing that, um, Professor Doctor Bauer, what are you doing? <laughs> you're promoted. And Doctor Bauer. I think we've run into the room. This man is saying he. I think we've run into this room. This man is saying he kissed me, and I think Doctor Bauer is a bit like, I don't know what to do about that. Like. <laughs> But you see That's me pay. Not my area of he just continues. I'm a he doctor. Like, he's I like don't continue. deal with sexual assaults. He's like clutching at his stomach, um, in agony, writhing in agony. He's clutching at his stomach. Looks like he's in uh, gastrointestinal pain. Um, I think. I think seeing uh, Mr. Faust, uh, sort of. Uh, r racing towards salt to make him throw up. I think he's like, ah, oh, yeah. Um, people get poisoned sometimes, mm -hmm. and clearly some shit is going on here. Um, so I think I'll uh, sort of start looking through my bag uh, to see if maybe I I probably have a bazoa. Okay. Um, I'm not definitely, but probably. Could you, as you as you look at the, as you look at the, as you look at um, Professor Sanchez, could you make me a spot hidden roll, please? Spot him. I, 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 I will have a go. I'm not terrible at that. It's, That's okay. a success. Yep, but you're ticking that. You look at, as you're digging through, you look at over at um, Professor Sanchez. You think you see something moving under the skin on his stomach. Oh no. <laughs> oh. I've seen Annihilation. <laughs> Okay, um, Dr. Bauer, however, has not seen Annihilation. So, um... <laughs> Alien. I think I see something moving under the skin. I think I will, uh, ask him to lie down. Uh, sir, if you could, uh, lie down for me, please. Um, so I can take a good look at you. And he does so, but he's still in great pain. He's like, you know, can barely keep still. Yeah, yeah, no, um, and I will, uh, like, untuck his shirt and sort of, uh, hitch it up so I can, I can have a proper look. Okay. Um... With your hands as well, are you, like, rubbing over his skin, trying to find it? Yeah, I think, I think that, um, you know, sort of, like, if it's, you know, like, things, like, incredibly bad indigestion could cause something like this, like, even then, like, sometimes you do see, you know, um... Yeah, things within the body moving under the skin, and so I think I'm sort of like using my hands to sort of ensure that it's not something like that. Awesome. Sanity roll, please. <laughs> Delightful. Um, that's an extreme success. That's See, the other day when I was like, oh, I'm rolling amazingly. This is just, I just roll good. I'm so sorry. <laughs> Do I also have to roll sanity? Uh, no, you don't have to roll sanity because as. Um, as Dr. Bauer runs his hands over the stomach trying to find it, you feel something gelatinous moving under the skin about the size of your fist. Oh, I don't like that. That's not indigestion. <laughs> what have you been eating? That's why we need to make him throw up. 
immediately. Are you making him? Are you feeding him the salt water? Yes, absolutely. You yeah. do that. I I sanction this. I think that's sounds yeah. good. You feed you. You have to you have to make him drink quite a lot of it, and he does. <laughs> <laughs> Splat, as close to um, close to. It's probably at this point that the other three come back from there from the storeroom. Flint, Denver, That's and amazing. him come back from the storeroom, rushing back. I would say. Because, I would have been following those uh, yeah. bloody uh, footprints. Yep, yeah. and they they uh, led you right. They led you right here. You you actually right. you, you you've actually gone past the the office and the wounded man, and as you enter the door. It's a pro at the same point that Professor Sanchez throws, spews something up, and near your feet, Denver Smith, this fist-sized white maggoty creature lands with a splat oh. with um, white viscous fluid around it. I would like everybody to make me a sanity roll. I feel like I... The player what also the have to be done because I think I know what the problem is. That's a lot of forties. How is Denver so sane? That's amazing. I've seen a lot of things. <laughs> <laughs> Same for um, who have we not had? Yeah. Oh, Flint. Oh, Tim. buddy. I'm not doing oh, well. No. I'm a... Oh, he oh, was be right. No. He was be right back. Um. So for a pass, it's zero. For a fail, it's one d three. Time. One. Okay, one. And this yeah. maggot, this maggoty thing that landed on the ground. Oh, you're right. You're right. This maggoty thing that it's still moving. See it wriggling oh. as it's trying to right itself. I immediately step on it. Roll me a. Uh, Can I? That's Sorry. me first thing. Immediate step of it. I'm not even going to make you roll for it. Splat. You just roll it and you just like feel it burst under your foot as if it's a balloon. Oh, I could have recorded that for. Never mind. It's a bug. Well, never are you going to record. If it you were speaking like... to an, an entomologist, I'm certain I could give you a more eloquent answer. <laughs> it looked like it could have been some kind of parasite. It looked like it made him uh, ill, sick. Oh, but it's a good thing that I come and killed the fucker. Yeah. All's well that ends well, right? Uh, have you seen your, that? How was your trip to the basement? <laughs> what was the one of the who knew? <laughs> well, I didn't hear what you said, so I don't know why you're not expecting how me was, to repeat how it. Was, how was your trip to the basement? I hope it was enlightening. Exciting. We're going to need the doctor down there. We need you to take a look at a post-mortem. A post dead. My goodness. I, I told you. People you come that... after artifacts. You say that loud enough well... for everybody to hear? I see. So yeah, I'm not exactly a subtle one. Oh. <laughs> Trinidad, and you hear Professor Sanchez. Trinidad, Trinidad is. She, what happened? Where, where is she? What happened? I wouldn't worry myself just now. I think it's best that you stay calm, and that we made sure that you're fully recovered from this odd uh, attack. That it looked like the sucked. I go over and get a a, a glass <clears throat> of. The heaviest right. alcohol possible and just hand it over. Sorry, Flint, you're about to say something? Flint, Flint you're about to say something? I just Sorry. say when he asked what... I just said, um... When he asked what happened, I just say it looks like the life has sucked out of her. An observation I'm certain could be shared when he's not freshly infested. That... Can I very quickly just make sure that uh, the the fist-sized beastie that we saw him cough up, yeah. he hasn't just coughed up a bit of his lung or anything. I want to make sure that he's not going to keep it over in the next 10 minutes. Are you getting in close to it? It is. I don't think we're putting it back. <laughs> <laughs> you, I'll, I'll give you this straight up. You have never seen anything like this. 
Oh no! Oh god, it's a hot. I know it's a hot, but I don't like it. Okay. Um. Well, I don't know what it is, and I'm probably not going to learn anything this moment. So, um, I will ask. I think Faust and uh, Locke to stay with uh, Professor Sanchez whilst Smith. Uh, Would you uh, accompany me to um, Ms... uh, I'm sorry, I did not even uh, Uh, get her name. Uh, Ms. Rizzo. Rizzo. Mm -hmm. You answer that one? Mm. Okay. So, that was... Gideon and Flint are staying with the professor. We say Tim stays with the professor. Um, Denver and Gideon going. Denver and Reinhardt going down to the going down to the storeroom. So Denver leads um, Doctor Bauer to the storeroom to the body. I will make you roll for it. Actually, I will make you roll for it. Um, Doctor Bauer, can you roll me a sanity again, please? This is the first time oh, you've seen no. this. First. No! My one D6, please. One D6. Oh my goodness. Okay. Um. Hold what? yourself, Doctor. Hold okay. yourself. Ooh, just about. <laughs> You're meant to see oh. this stuff all the time, the crying out loud. You have never seen anything like this. You see, the first thing that draws your attention is the... It's about five or six inches across. It's like red... Wound, bloody wound, raw flesh. You can see like muscle. You can see like bone in it. It's like in, almost in a perfect circle with, round the edge. It's like marks as if there've been teeth or claws around the edge and inside. Then you look at her face, and her face is just. If you didn't know any better, you'd say all the fat had been removed from her face. Hi, Brian. Welcome back. Everything has just hit the fan. Well, Hi. <laughs> thank you. God, so, isn't that an Aboriginal Australian thing, where they think that the fat retains the soul or something? That's not something Doctor Bauer would know, so I'm not going to dwell on it. <laughs> I was going to say I have no idea. I think I think because Doctor Doctor Bauer, um, his uh, dear friend, who has uh, put him on this mission. Um, or uh, is an is an sort of archaeologist, and I think he he will occasionally mumble things like that to himself, and then be like, I don't know, I'm not a I'm not an archaeologist. <laughs> I don't know anything about this. I love it. Um, I will uh, examine the body, see if I can figure out cause of death, what could have caused some kind of um, sort of physical reaction like this, where it seems that the you know sort of her adipose tissue seems to have been disrupted. Um, uh, with would that be a medicine check? Yeah, make me a medicine check. See what you're thinking on that. It's a, a, a plain success. Regular success. Go on that answer. bug, it came out of someone, didn't it? What, sorry? That. Um, I was just sort of mumbling and sort of talking to the dark at the same time. Uh, but uh, that, that bug thing upstairs, that came out of him, didn't it? Yeah, he, um, he had a, uh, cough, cough, cough it up. You don't think by any come out of this, lass. There's a bug around here somewhere. A, a bug like a, like an insect, or a bug like a, um... Well, all I'm thinking is that you got a big hole in our chest, yeah. and that thing was big, so if it came... Out? Would it make a big hole like that, or is that something going in? Yeah, you, you do your investigation. You tell me if that hole's been going inwards or it's been coming outwards. Because if it's going outwards, that, I think we might have another problem down here. An excellent question. Does it look like the hole is going inwards or outwards? Right. Your med- your success on medicine in that case. You can't detect any fat in her body at all. In fact, the only fat you can detect in her body is all around that wound. And those marks around the side look rather like teeth. 
but what could make that sort of wound a, a circle like that with teeth around the edge? Circle with teeth around it, like a leech? Perhaps? God, I wish I had any natural world. <laughs> Um, that's what you get for putting 90 in. Use... That's what you get for maxing out one of the, one's particular skill. <laughs> I've maxed out <laughs> two skills, thank you very much. I've also maxed out first aid. <laughs> um, that's pretty much all I've got going for me. Um, <laughs> um, I think I will... So, what I'm gathering from this, this young woman has almost no fat on her. Um, except from in sort of a, like, around the wound that she has right now. Does it look like that wound, like Denver said, does it look like that is something that has come out or something that has gone in? It looks like something went in. It doesn't look like, the only, it looks, it doesn't look like, there's no, like, hole in it, like, for, say, a fist-sized maggot to come through. You don't see that. It's just like a mess of flesh. So it looks like something... Well, if you didn't know any better, something bit her. It looks like she has, uh... It looks like, uh... She was, um, bitten? Almost? Uh... As a, uh, as a... As a, uh, Parasite? So for Zoom, Mr. Sanchez, I, I don't believe that it came from, um, her at this point. This is not to say that it, uh, it did not come from somebody else at some other point. Uh, yeah, you uh, you understand me? Uh, I think so. I'm glad to hear about that much. At least we don't need to worry about something slithering around in here. Well, we but, have to uh, worry about some things that uh, slithered around in here and uh, bit her. And, uh, well, the other side of things, unless it runs around on two feet wearing particularly... Do I have a rough idea of what size shoe going by the bloodstain I saw? Yeah, about fairly, like, say, man of about, say, I'm going to guess six foot tall, size 10 maybe. Seems like a normal, oh, normal footprint. <laughs> yeah, well, it's, if that little thing running around biting people is running around wearing size 10s, I have a feeling that uh, someone else has brought that thing down here. Unless how tall is in the crate. How tall is Denver Smith? Just out of curiosity. I can't remember. We've actually put in a distinct one, let's see. Hmm? I'm just thinking to myself, I can't remember where we put in a distinct one. Where would that be in uh Um just make you can just decide now if you want to. I'm not gonna force it on you. Oh, probably about six two. <laughs> that is a foot taller than Dr. Bauer. Um <laughs> He's five two, um, but yeah, I think that he's just sort of. I think he's tense. I think he's tense, um, and I think he says, um, "This young woman has almost no uh, body fat on her, which is when we saw her, you know, sort of." Uh, uh, 20 minutes ago, and she, she did not seem unusually unhealthy at the time. So that seems to be something that has probably taken place within the last 20 minutes or so, since we last saw her anyway. I that does not fill you with coffee. Whatever on earth it is, it's quick. Because yes, we haven't seen her in 20 minutes, but this hasn't happened in 20 minutes. You think about the amount of time it took for her to walk down here to get the item, to get as far as she's got. It's got to have been taken at least five, maybe even getting closer to ten. And by the time we came down here, it was long gone. No sign or sound of anything running away or anything like that, in which case it's disappeared before we got down there. Anything that could do this in... Let's give it his best estimate of ten minutes. What was it she was looking for again? Artifacts and a uh, book of notes. Supposed to help us in trying to find this, uh, this here pyramid. Uh, 
I think the Do others have grabbed that? what was on the floor. Yeah, is there anything on the floor that it seems like she's dropped, or do I remember what Sanchez asked her to look for? Um, just to recap, when I would say that when Flint, Denver, and Tim came back to the office with the whole maggot thing, you would have seen Flint carrying a book and a crate with him. Right, okay, so it, it, it seems like we've got everything we needed. Or at least everything she was going to pick up for us. Well, the crate was broken open. So there's a chance there might have been something else in there. We don't know. We got what we got from it, that's about it. Almost certainly there was something in there that somebody did not want us to find. Hopefully we'll find out why. Nervous. Hey, you and me no. both. Are you, are you are you still down in the storeroom? Or are you returning back to the office while you're saying this? I think we were down in the storeroom, and I think we are now returning. Okay, I'll say that when you return to Sanchez's office, um, you got like um Gideon, um Flint, and Tim, and Jackson. There, they're like you know, giving him brandy, making sure he's all right. He's like sat up against the cupboard now, and um. He says, oh, uh, gracias, gracias, senor. Um, yes, uh, uh, oh, that mouth, oh, that face, that mouth, oh. It, the, the mouth was, was wide open like a, like a circle and those teeth like, like some sort of leech. Uh, and that hair, moustache, if I, I'm sure I've seen that before somewhere, but that mouth, no, oh. And he put his mouth over my mouth, and I felt something force its way through into my mouth from him. Moustache. Moustache and wild hair. Now, where have we heard that before? Someone who does not like to talk looking at me. They ain't looking at you, you got a full beard. Forget about the fucking moustache. <laughs> and your teeth are quite fine, as they are. <laughs> uh, really not. <laughs> and he smiles. <laughs> and they're all like crooked and... Maybe there's more to this death cult than we thought. Maybe it was closer than we realised. Would anybody like to look at the book now that you've got it and there's a brief moment of respite? Isn't it written in Spanish? It is, but fortunately, a couple of, people, couple of you read Spanish. Ah. Yeah. And also, we uh, saved man. this professor's life, so maybe you can do us the favor of reading. Well, give him a chance to recover first. In that case, I'm going to ask Robin, as you look through the notes, read those notes, and written, I'm going to ask you to read this out if you would. Hmm? I've put the English underneath it, so I'm you don't need to worry about the Spanish. To, uh, hey. I've got the Spanish. Under I'll read the... I've got the English underneath. <laughs> yeah. Hmm. <clears> hmm. <throat> So Spanish, written by Gaspar Figueroa, 1543 yep. on vellum. Figueroa, Spaniard who would travel to Peru with Francisco Pizarro. <clears throat> According to the text, Figueroa set out to seek his own fortune following Pizarro's assassination in 1541. He was accompanied by Hernando Ruiz, Diego Garrido, Luis de Mendoza, and Pedro de, la v de Velasco, fellow conquistadors who had served with Pizarro. <clears throat> they travelled into the southern highlands of the Andes, looking for treasure, hoping to make their fortunes before heading back to Spain and retiring in luxury. <clears throat> Hearing rumours of an ancient temple filled with gold, the men set off into the mountains southwest of Lake Titicaca. They found, there they found a pyramid surrounded by a maze-like structure of underground tunnels. The walls of the tunnels were inlaid with intricate gold carvings. The men pried out a large section of gold, exhausting themselves in the attempt. That night, as they rested, an evil sickness befell Figueroa's companions. In the morning light, they looked gaunt and deathlike. 
complaining of agonizing hunger, they pursued Figueroa. The Mendoza caught up with him and started to devour him like a human leech. Figueroa shot his friend in the head and fled, pausing only to snatch up as much of the gold as he could carry. Figueroa eventually arrived back in Lima, hoping to get passage home, but he was too weakened by the, his ordeal. Figueroa describes himself as wasted, little more than a walking corpse. I read final confessions as Figueroa's attempt to lift the guilt that his avarice had placed upon him. He believed that his fate and that of his companions was brought about by their decision, desecration of a holy place, and his most fervent wish was that he could undo the damage he had inflicted. He describes how he can still hear his friends' voices crying out in inhumane hunger, and how in the dark of the night can hear another voice, ancient and seductive, promising him eternal life if he returns to the temple. The voice told Figueroa how to contact it, but it seems Figueroa was too afraid to ever attempt this. A postscript written by the priest who performed the last rites <clears throat> states that Figueroa died a day after completing his final confessions. His last words were an entreaty to whatever gods were listening to forgive him his blasphemies. Excuse me. May I uh, I, I'm sorry, uh, perhaps uh, the translation got lost. I thought that uh, Mr. Mendoza, Louis de Mendoza, I thought that was somebody we met today. Not somebody who had been shot in the head. Or is that a very common name? Maybe this is John Smith? I, I do not know. Mm. That's what the name on the paper says. Obvious. <laughs> Glad to see. Uh, and I hand it over for other people to look at. I speak no Spanish. This is no use to me. <laughs> yeah. Mind if you, you, had, if you had it to Jack's... step forward for the sake of... Hello, carry on. No, I was about to say, if you hand it to Jackson, he'll look at it and... Maybe there's more to this death cult than I thought. It can't be a coincidence. Well, for the sake of hearing already about our friend with the, the fuzzy hair and the moustache, and the fact that one of the, you talking about seeing something with a circular mouth trying to bite you, or doing something to you, and you're getting infested with that little slug on the floor over there. I hate to say, I think we're wrapped up into something rather titillating. This but, could well be the greatest discovery of the century. Immortal well, monsters and and ancient conquistadors and whatever the hell that was points at the smear on the ground. <laughs> well, it, if we survive, that is to go along with that, considering we're all in this room right now and getting a bit of a whispered tone and get everyone. Get we were close. already ready to risk our personal safeties in exchange for wealth. Well, now is it just me or do? You all agree that maybe we should be finding a way to get there ahead. they are waiting until Monday. I certainly don't intend to go back to th that pale gentleman and his leech friend. But I don't think we can trust him. So we don't smell right about him. But we know roughly where to go. Southwest of Lake Titicaca. What say we head there now? And we have a large piece of gold that needs returning. Aye. At the mention of the gold, uh, Flint kind of just slams it down on the desk and asks Dr. Sanchez, what is it? Oh. Good question, good question. When had found that in the storeroom after reading the book, and he points to the book in your hands, um, Trinidad... And why we found, we learnt about, we heard about, Trinidad thought it sounded familiar, it sounded like something dating from that time. We found, she went down to the storeroom, thought we had something like that, and that's what she found. Seems to match Why the description. The flesh on? I can't tell you if, if it was some sort of ward, 
like the manuscript says, protecting the evil. Maybe, maybe the evil can't. T maybe someone touched by that evil can't handle it. I don't know. This is well, certainly come in this handy. is far beyond me. This is far beyond me. This all seems madness, or something from out of a, a cheap paperback serial. Mm. Hey, isn't it wonderful? <laughs> You also have the no. ori the original book, and on the spine, um, those of you who speak Spanish would recognize Final Confessions of Gaspar Figueroa. I can show this to you. This is the original manuscript. Ooh. Crap, Was it still that wet? <laughs> that's, like, that's, more, that's more like a generic book picture, because that's more like a generic tone picture, but yeah. I'll give you the description of it that's underneath. Amazing. Um, oh, you know that smells so funky. <laughs> oh, there's stuff underneath it, okay. Um, Flint. I'm going to ask you, because you read the notes that were based on the book, I'm going to ask you to um, roll me 1d3 sanity loss for reading this. I know you didn't quite read the book, you read the notes, but I'm still going to count it. So roll me a 1d3, Flint, <laughs> and lose that much sanity. One. On the plus side, you get plus one in your Cthulhu Mythos. I'll put that wow. up. Congrats. For what it's worth. <laughs> I have but a yeah. fast feeling I'm going to be the first one to go insane here. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh... May I, may I ask the, the keeper a question? Of course. Um, different keepers run Cthulhu Mythos differently. Do you consider Cthulhu Mythos as like, if I try hard enough, I can make this man's head explode into snakes? No, for me, Cthulhu Mythos is okay. I'm gonna um, stepping back a moment. Stepping back a moment. Um, sanity for me, san the sanity mechanic for me isn't just how mentally strong you are. It's your mental defenses against the unknown. In one in one of the stories, there's a professor, and even though there's overwhelming evidence that something weird is going on, he still puts it down to a dream, and he never budges from that stance. And to me, that's his sanity, that's his mind defending him from things he can't understand. And I'm saying that's what to me that's what sanity is. Sanity is your mind protecting you from what you can't understand. On the other side of that, Cthulhu mythos is your mind's defenses weakening, opening up to outside forces. So rather than Cthulhu Mythos is like, you know, just like straight up magic, Cthulhu Mythos for me is you're suddenly recognizing the possibility that something is out there and it's actually changing your mind, changing your, changing you. Awareness. It it. Yeah. Mm. Okay, thank you. I just wanted to check that because I didn't want to, you know, uh, get two months in and ask for somebody's head to turn into a snake and then it doesn't. <laughs> so... I would I mean, love to turn someone's head into a snake. I don't know what you're talking about. I mean, you can still you can still <laughs> exactly, try that. Exactly. You get, you get another Cthulhu Mythos. You can still try that. It may work, but that's not well, like you know. It's not like building up magic. Well, there we like, go. Yeah. We'll yeah. see where it goes. I guess. <laughs> it was kind of fun yeah, to I... a PDF like open, uh, not too long ago. <laughs> so, with that, what would you like to do? The time is. I would say the time is about six o'clock. It's starting to come to it's evening. The sun is setting and it's getting towards evening. I don't know I, about uh, you, but I think we I need would, to get on our way there now. I would request that we take the gold bar with us as well. Certainly. I. So, sorry to be practical about this, but how are you going to get there? The trucks aren't due to arrive until Monday. I know the trucks aren't due to arrive, but I want to take a look around and see if there's any other transport we could uh, procure. Okay. If not, I think we need to make a stand and get ready, because we're going to need to protect ourselves against them. They might not got to try and do whatever we do, whatever looking around, whatever information we try and gather. We have to do it subtly. We don't know where their eyes are. It they think we're onto them. 
We might already have a little fight on our hands before if we are even ready. Best, it may be that Mr. Larkin does not know the nature of his companion. There's a truth to that, there's a chance. But if he does it, if he does, in which case, if we tried to go and save him, we'd be playing right into his hand. What if there's another one? Just like the same with the round teeth. Hardly bears thinking about. The fact of the matter is, if nothing else, we know where they're going to be headed. We know where they're going. Ideally, I'd like to get there beforehand before they start setting anything up. Steal whatever treasure before they get there, or block it off. I feel it's better to have a more defensive position rather than going into an area which is defended and we have no idea about it. And we have no idea what they're going to try to do. I think Jackson would would say this point. You speak. I think you're. Talking of, I think you're talking sense. I think this is the right thing to do, but I think we should head to Puno first. Wherever we know that um, the Larkin's trucks arrive on Monday, he won't be going anywhere until then. That gives us a day to that gives us a day's head start. I think we should head to Puno first, get what extra supplies we need there, and then carry on out to the pyramid. What do you say? Aye. That sounds logical. Sounds good to me. Mm. Do any of us know anything about Puno? Because that is uh, not a, not a, you know, it's not a, a place I've heard of. Um, just... um uh, Lock, uh, Lockwood. Uh, yeah, sorry. I was going to say, yeah, uh, I'm fairly local. I'll, sorry, I'll give you the brief description of it. So this is what Flintlock tells you. Um, it's a small Thank city, you. about 20,000 residents. Located in the southern Hi Andean highlands, it stretches back from the shores of Lake Titicaca up into the overlooking hills. More prosperous areas are located closer to the water. Majority of the buildings are low one or two floor structures made from stone or brick. The streets they line become increasingly narrow and more maze-like the farther uphill one goes. The centre of the city is dominated by a broad plaza ringed with neat greenery and trees overlooked by the imposing edifice of the Cathedral Basilica of St. Charles Borromeo. And it's a very rural okay. area. Farms um, farms producing maize, potatoes, quinoa, quinoa. Um, quinoa. Also raising, quinoa. Also raising alpacas and llamas. Yeah, it's not a big tourist spot, but it's um, it's very, it's very self-sufficient. Mm. There's an idea, there's another side of things. Only going by the map more than anything else. Maybe there's a boat going here in that way, or we could procure one. Because we might be able to get there a bit easier by by the ocean rather than. We take that, just taking a look at the maps, which I have taken a look at. We get to Kalau. And then take the sea all the way down. Try and get to Moledo. You're looking at that. I, I can am show you... sure I'm butchering these entirely, but still. I'll show you the route map, actually. This is um, hmm. the route map of the local area, for, and I think Sanchez would show you this map as well and just wait for it to load on mine. These are quite hefty files, actually. Um, I should preload these. They come up pretty easily. Um, One moment, hopefully. Oh. <laughs> give it a moment. There we go. There we go. So, as you say, um, Denver, Kalao, there are steamer routes to Melendo. You would then cut across country on the railway to Puno. Mm, uh, yeah. That's that might work out a bit better for us. Mm. I don't mind. Dr. Bauer, uh, when we decide on a route, though, he is going to call a house at some point. That's, that's the only stipulation I have. You're going to call on a who? Corner Faust. Ah, fair enough. You said something earlier that I want to follow up on. Um, yes. Well, let's. Uh, I, I will. I will let Mr. Smith find us a route first. Well, as I see, taking a look, we head up. We ain't too far away from the coast. Or even we might be able to grab one of the boats here. I don't know. I can't remember what happens to be a, 
out there waiting in the in the waters. Um, we get out onto the, the main sea. That looks like a quick trip down there. Catch it. Catch a railway straight over to Puna would be no time at all. It could be we might even be able to have beaten by a few more. I do have some uh, some small amount of funds to, to lean on, possibly. Well, I have no idea how much it's going to cost, but there's only one way to find out. Hmm. None. But yeah, anyway. Uh, what kind of race course was it in Lima? Sorry, where's it? Where are you seeing that? Uh, I saw it on the Lima map, Jeff. Um, one moment. Let me... The race course. Yeah. yeah, the horse track. Race course. I think it'd probably be like horse racing or even alpaca racing, maybe. Yeah. Uh, llama racing. Llama racing. Is it worth? It? Is it worth? Maybe seeing if we can buy a few horses off them for our journey. I I have no idea about how they do things around here, but usually there's a difference between a pack horse and a race horse. And uh, even if we even if we knew how to ride them, we couldn't outpace a truck on them. It's a decent idea, but not over this distance. Aye. Either way, we can take them on the boat, though. That's true. Getting close. But then again, uh, that comes uh, back down to funds again, on how much we've got spent. Exactly how much they're going to start requesting for a horse. Strata rating. <laughs> on a success, you can afford a horse. On a failure, you but get a pony. Is credit rating something I should have put points into? Yes. I'm not going to... I'm not going to... I'm, I'm not going to be too heavy I, on the credit rating, uh, don't worry about it. Look, when it comes down to oh, it, God, I'm not it. sure whether the horse is the right <laughs> idea. I mean, there is a train which takes us right to Puno. Mm. Then um, from there, maybe we could use with a horse just for the sake of it. looks like It looks more like a trail heading over down where I'm guessing we're going. Heading obviously for the southwestern area. It looks like we might need something which will help us over that, but that depends on how much we want to carry. Me, personally, I'm used to carrying a lot on my back. Mm -hmm. How about the rest of these? I can carry my fascia. Uh, I have um, arthritis in my wrist, so uh, I'm not so good at, uh, at carrying. Right. So we'll need at least one horse just for the sake of you. Uh... Yeah, uh, either that or a strong, um, gentle gentleman, um, gentle person. No, no. Are you planning on bringing a gentle person with you? No, I suppose not. Look, when it comes <laughs> down to it, trying to think through this practically. <laughs> it's all well and good not seeing where we can take our own stuff, but we're taking our own stuff for God knows how long. Now, I know a bit about survival and that kind of thing of going out into the wilds. I don't know about the rest of you. I practically live in the wilds, so... See? You'll handle. You'll be fine. But it comes down to the rest. It depends on how much you believe you need to carry. I know I can carry enough to keep me going for as long as I feel I need. I don't know about the rest of you. If you feel <laughs> like you need something to carry... You need to get something to carry. You need to make up your mind quick, though. <laughs> I think Dr. Bow is feeling a bit harassed. <laughs> He's only ever lived in Berlin. He not <laughs> carry anything before. Like, do you guys have ten? Like... Listen, listen, if we buy something, like, we, we can get stuff at Puna. You don't need a tarp and a stickle, do you? Yeah. <laughs> I've, got, I've got enough problems carrying my entire camera setup. Oh, by the way, I want to take photos of all the relics. Like, uh, uh, photos of at least the book, if the outside hmm. of it at least, and the big gold thing. Oh, yep. Yep, that's absolutely fine. For a split second, then, I thought you were going to take, like, uh, pictures of all of us and... I was going to be way too happy. 
<laughs> we, I mean, we could do that as well, but yes, absolutely. <laughs> I, I see, there'd be plenty of time for that on the boat. The gold thingy. Yeah. I think, on the boat. as you're discussing this, Professor Sanchez is obviously overhearing this, and he can provide you some extra information. He tells you that the route that you're talking about, going by steamer to Melendo, then going from train to Puno, takes about a day and a half, so you'll be there well in advance of the trucks that are supposed to be coming. How long would the trucks usually take? Three days. Three days. Two days? Three. Excellent. Three, Three. days. Three days. Even better. So you have to excuse me. Partially deaf. I don't pick up <laughs> everything straight away. All those bombs. Oh. No, 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 that's that's more actually a real player character now having to put that into Denver, which wasn't meant to be a part of this. Um, ba -bum. cool. And back into the game. <laughs> if we uh, manage to get the steamer, that would get us there in. Well, we've got what a day and a half left before we were due to leave. Yeah, yes, that would get yeah. Uh, when we were supposed to be, when these trucks were supposed to be leaving, if we get one tomorrow morning. Okay. And we'd have three ways of leeway to set up our defences. Aye. Defences? Well, I'm, I'm sorry, perhaps, um, again, perhaps lost in translation. What do you Please? think is going to happen here at the other end of this trip? Yeah, uh, on an archaeological expedition. Yeah. Uh, Do you remember what was downstairs? Leech monsters. You saw what happened down there. The fact of the matter, if that's anything related to this death cult, which apparently it might do, considering that mustachy, flaily hair guy is apparently one of these leeches. I do want to take pictures of the wounds that afflicted her, by the way. Just everything supernatural, I want a photo of. Okay. <laughs> your camera we'll is going to be so good. We say you can do that. Just don't drop your camera and break it, otherwise that'll be horrendous. Consume <laughs> 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 all the stuff which is happened. in this camera than myself. <laughs> uh, I'll say yeah, that... Consume everything which has happened so far. I think we can test this like a war zone instead. I can keep you alive. You can do what you need to. I deliberately did not go to war for this exact reason. I'm a doctor. I'm not a soldier. And I'm 21, so... You're a child. Oh. So, so, and I'm a the, soldier. I'd make sure you can live your day to day. If the plan is to organize a steamer on the Sunday morning of the 20th, that does leave you the Saturday evening free. What would you like to do on the Saturday evening? I think we need to try and make ourselves look as normal as possible. We I'm don't want to give them no suspicion that anything has happened. Tequila, we don't, tequila, tequila. We don't. We go. We have a relaxing evening. We make it look like we're getting notes ready. We do whatever we would normally do. We are just having an evening. I'd like to buy a firearm, please. Please, thank you. <laughs> Okay, I can give you a firearm. Um, what would you like to buy? Uh, Do you know what you're looking at? I mean, it's just like a camera, right? Pointed leg. <laughs> I would like to help him so that he gets a good gun. Please, please. <laughs> yes, uh, uh, I think Flint would be joining in on that. No. Baby, baby's first murder weapon, yes. You want that whole concept of uh, point and shoot, eh? Uh... I'm, I'm good at pointing mechanisms at things I want to point at. I don't think we should give you anything with too much power. We give you that, you're going to blow your hand off before you do anything else. Yes, we'll we'll give you practice as well as we go along the way. I'm sure we can handle that. Yes. We don't want you uh, trying anything like my Loretta. So, uh, one option is... I think is I might uh, get a firearm myself. I would say, if you want like light, fi lightish firearms, a point three to point thirty two revolver would probably do you. Are you right good. Okay, you had a trouble when you're getting close up into the well, whatever it is we're facing. And I was, you get close I... enough and point and shoot, it'd be no longer a problem, I tell you that much. You get um, too far away, maybe not so much. I won't worry too much about cost, 
But um, I'll say that you spend the evening um, looking around, shopping for weapons, and I'll put a. Um, I'll give both um, Flint, both Gideon and Tim. I'll give you a gun, basically. I'll give you this revolver. Thank you. See, Dr. Bauer has literally nothing in any firearm skill, so I think giving him a gun would be uh, more harm <laughs> than good. To be fair, when it comes down to it, I think we're going to need you more for your mind than anything else. With no offence to your other physical capabilities, which I'm sure you must have. But I, will. I think we're going <laughs> to need your head more than anything else. That's what has been proven. He has 30 strength, but like... <laughs> Look, plain and simple, we're going to keep you safe so you can keep us alive. Do you we'll exactly why I was uh, hired for this mission, Denka? Right. <laughs> Surprisingly, if these ones were part of like, a uh, death cult, then uh, I think they chose the wrong people if they were planning on uh, going against us. Does make me wonder why on earth they called us in the first place. I don't you like keep that. You talking about this death cult. I think that uh, cult is a strong word used by people who don't understand desperation. Uh, it's the truth of that, certainly. But then again, we haven't had another name to call them yet. So I think I'll stick with the death cult. At least we all know what we're talking about. I think I think that's possibly especially truth spoken by a German man in nineteen twenty <laughs> whatever. It's a good truth. It's a good truth. But uh, we'll save them for the better times, eh? Right. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. So, as you make your final preparations, um, ready to head out by steamer towards Puno and towards. Who knows what? I think that's a good place to bring this first session of Mass on the Alex Hotep to an end. <laughs> oh, okay. So, stop the, I'll stop the creepy music. <laughs> I, 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 I had some creepy music going on in the background. You didn't hear it because it. I, I, I love the creepy music. music. I've, yeah. I've just been listening to generic music. My bad. So, I was um, too nervous to listen to any music at all. <laughs> So, Patrick, no. as I we forgot, um, at the end of the session, um, we'll do what's called the stars and wishes. Stars are something you liked about tonight's session. Wishes are something you'd like to see more of in the future. Ooh. So we'll start with Kieran. What was what do you like? What did you enjoy? What would you like to see more of? I think being given the opportunity to flax my two really good skills. Is something I'm always going to enjoy. Um, wishes? I don't know. I think once um, I think Dr. Bauer would like to get to know the other members of the party a little bit more you with regards to. to ask you something and you didn't. Yes. I want to remind you of that. I, I'm going to jot that down at the okay, beginning yeah, of next yeah. session. I yeah, want to cool, cool. bug Gideon about something, but also just sort of generally, I want to get an impression of the other character's physical and mental well-being, because I have pretty good psychoanalysis. I'm very good at medicine. <laughs> okay, we, we'd be able to. We should be able to do some of that um, on this on this journey to um, on the journey to Puno. Would be a great time to do that. Yeah. Exactly. Yes. Just observing. Going down the Thank line, you. Robin. 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 Robert. Sorry, I muted myself. <laughs> and um, no, uh, I really like um, that the maggots almost like uh, the chest bursters from Aliens. Um, and a wish is probably that I would succeed more on my sanity throws. <laughs> <laughs> Yep, you. Fortunately, um, the threshold for indefinite insanity, indefinite insanity, resets each day. So tomorrow, you tomorrow it counts like no, a new day. You you have a new load of sanity. You have like a new sanity threshold. So yeah, you got pretty fortunate with that. I think that could have gone a, bit, a lot worse for you. <clears throat> yes. Uh, 
Brian. Um, stores. I like how we started right off with the mysterious bit of the methos, uh wishes to see more of, uh, just to see, you know, everything, the ruins and all that, the pyramid. Ben? Uh, for the sake of the stars side of things, uh, I, I must have been, I think it was more going down and delving into that cellar and finding the body and finding all the information, literally chasing off Arthur's footsteps and watching them trail off into nothing. Really adding and making the scene feel um, absolutely amazing and sort of playing to each other's strengths a little bit as well. And wishes for the sake of going forward. I really want to see more of that being played in. I would love to start to the point of being able to use a firearm or even perhaps teaching others to use their firearms now they've got them and have no idea what they're doing. But yeah, definitely more the whole seeing everyone playing to their strengths, which we're already sort of delving into, but I just want to see more of that. And Patrick? I really enjoyed hanging out with everyone's characters and being able to play devil's advocate about how completely normal and lovely everyone is. Uh, I'm I'm not really sure. Uh, I, I would say that I would like to maybe flex some of my social skills next time when my voice is a bit better. Uh, but if people can speak English, wherever we're going. For me, stars, um, well, Obviously, I enjoyed running this. I enjoyed the whole thing. I've been looking forward to this. You have no idea how long I've been looking forward to running this. But um, I did kind of love the way that you were instantly suspicious of Larkin right from the start. <laughs> <laughs> yourself, I was like, look at this nice gentleman. <laughs> Listen, he looks like every academic I, like, Gideon has ever met, okay? And... I wasn't that suspicious up until the point where, oh yeah, I destroyed everything. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. Um, I did enjoy like um the whole investigation in the cellar as well. That I think that came came out really well, and the um, definitely business with oh, yeah. Sanchez, business with Sanchez and the parasites like that. Mm. Really... I I totally thought that not going into the basement meant I'd be able to have a lovely cigar. I was really <laughs> pleasantly surprised when I had to feed a guy salt water so he didn't get chest bursted. That was a pleasant and good surprise. Oh. <laughs> um, yeah, we, oh. we never investigated that fire, did we? We were like, oh, that's probably fine. <laughs> I I figured that the fire was a distraction, so someone could get into that. It's probably a it's probably a plot relevant fire, so it's fine. <laughs> um, wishes. Um, yeah, more. Um, I love it when things come together. I love seeing things come together. Um, that's one of the reasons why I had cameras, so I can like see reactions when like when Luis <laughs> de Mendoza came up and showed up in the notes from like four hundred years ago, and you're like, wait, we know a guy. <laughs> yeah, I didn't notice that at all. Well pointed out. <laughs> I was like, hang on a second. <laughs> Something's gone wrong. <laughs> I was uh, in character. My mind is immediately uh, my character's. Well, Mendoza. I have no idea what names are like around here. I'm sure there must be more Mendoza and stuff like that than anything else. But the fact of leech person eating people is like that. Sounds familiar, though. <laughs> sounds like there's there's familiar. probably only one, only one leech Luis Mendoza. Probably Those less common than very you hope. Together. You hope on that side of things. I <laughs> know uh, uh, well. you're looking for you're looking for my cousin. <laughs> <laughs> That's what we get there. They are all leech Mendozas. <laughs> there's just a whole army of leech Mendoza. <laughs> <laughs> oh. <laughs> we shall find out what happens at Puno next time. Very much looking forward to it.